I'm extremely grateful that you decided to join the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated on our Sunday morning worship experience. I realized that you had other options, but you allowed the Holy Spirit to send you our way. And for that, I'm eternally grateful and I always will be. Uh, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the victories and defeats in life. We pray that you would help us to learn to be content uh, in whichever case we find ourselves uh, and to recognize that uh, defeats can be a blessing just as victories. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This week, uh, our subject is agon the agony of Gethsemane. The agony of Gethsemane. Our text is found in Matthew's uh, chapter 26, verse 36 through 46. That's Matthew's chapter 26, verse 36 through 46. Our subject is the agony of Gethsemane. Uh, verse 36 reads, Then Jesus went uh, with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, uh, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And I'm going a little further. And he fell on his face and prayed, saying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And uh, I'll leave verse 40 through 46 for you to read at your leisure. Uh, and we'll try to use the time uh, as wisely as possible. In these times of pandemics and violent diseases, this COVID-19 period that is affecting all of us, we are transitioning from our studies of the first six chapter of the book of Isaiah en route to Romans chapter seven, verse 24. Isaiah cried out in the sixth chapter, woe is me. And the apostle Paul cries out, O wretched man that I am in uh, Romans chapter seven. Now we're going to spend uh, a week uh, perhaps in the Garden of Gethsemane and then next week the Lord's will will be at the cross on, on Calvary. Uh, and then uh, the next week we will proceed to Romans chapter seven, verse 24 and 25. And I'll just give you an, a little heads up on what's coming. Uh, Romans chapter seven, verse 24 reads, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now, our text for this sermon informs us that Jesus gets away from the crowd. He takes with him Peter, James, and John, the two sons of Zebedee. When we study the future of these three individuals, it would appear that even though they might have slept through most of the retreat, they did learn the important lesson of successful ministry that's taught here. The place was familiar to one that, uh, who would betray Jesus into the hands of his enemies because Judas had been there with Jesus on other occasions. This prayer time for Jesus gave him strength to stay the course instead of taking another direction. As followers of Jesus Christ, more of our battles are fought on our knees than our feet. Prayer is necessary if we intend to be effective in our ministry. Jesus set up what could be construed to be a prayer retreat. Prayer prepare, pre prepares us for life's many swift transitions. I mentioned last Sunday that life is filled with swift transitions and we have good days and bad days, but I'm glad that I can testify that my good days do outnumber my bad and therefore I won't complain. Our bad days are filled with dangers, 
But uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2 captures our attention by reminding us that the Lord is faithful. He will, he will establish us and guard us against the evil one. And even though the danger is real and to be feared, we must not forget our biblical instructions that will equip us for these times. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And even though uh, having power, and that, and, and, and we don't have to, to, to study long and hard to understand and desire to have greater power, and uh, we, we would love to have more people loving us, but a sound mind is what's the, the, one of the main things that's needed in times like these. Sound minds will keep us from making haste decisions from people will help us to be rooted and grounded in the, our faith. Faith does come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Jesus, who was and is the word of God that became flesh and lived for a while here on earth to show us the truth, Jesus said emphatically in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is saying that if you stick close to me, if you stay in me and I in you, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free or the truth will set you free, as one version says it. Second Timothy chapter three and verse one says, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Second Peter four and 12 says, beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. The things that we are encountering in this day, this day and age, we should not think it to be strange. It's not anything new. There have been pandemics before. There have been uh, 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 all of the stuff that seemed to be going wrong in our society, in life, personally. But we shouldn't think it's something that's strange or something new, something that's happening to us that's not happening to others that happen, ever happened before. Verse 13 says, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. It's daily all in our faces how fear and weaknesses, hatred and misunderstanding is running rampant. Throughout most of all nations, races and different financial uh, statuses and companies and job titles and from our house to the White House to the palace, uh, there, there's all kinds of confusions going on, all kinds of hatred uh, and, and heartaches. But, but our hope is in nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. God has proven once again that we cannot require answers from him at our time, but he will answer at his time. In other words, he'll, under, he, he'll answer us and then we'll understand better by and by. Last week I mentioned two similar but different situations. In the Garden of Gethsemane, water or sweat flowed from Jesus like blood. And then on the cross on Calvary, blood flowed like water from him. One uh, displaying the agony of defeat and the other the thrill of victory over the penalty of our sin. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was agonizing with all of the evil possible of this world to a point that he appeared temporarily to have lost his power connection with his father and asked his father to remove the responsibility of drinking from the bitter cup before him. Life can quickly toss us into a place where we experience a power outage when we need it most. And it's through prayer that we remain connected, that we remain hooked up with our Heavenly Father and who is our power source. 
that cup contained much more bitterness than we will ever have to endure in life. Even though we whine and, and cry and complain and grumble about what we have to go through, what we have to go through is nothing near what Jesus had to go through. All of the fear, hatred, heartache, shame, brokenness, all of the ills of sin was placed upon Jesus. Jesus became the scapegoat for all of us because he took our sins away from us. And no mortal man in sinful flesh can understand the conflict in the holy soul of Jesus who had never experienced the slightest shadow of sin and had never known any barriers between himself and his heavenly father. Now Jesus must face the worst agony of life, all at the same time for all of us. We must understand that the sin and the complete agonies of each soul that had lived before then, that was alive at that time and forevermore, uh, all of the sins of our lives, all of the agony, the hurt, the heartaches, the pain, and the suffering, Jesus, that, that's caused by sin, our sin, was heaped upon or poured upon Jesus all at the same time. Every bit of the sin suffering all of all mankind was released upon him. And Jesus' prayer was to seek God's will and not man's wishes. Jesus taught us to pray until prayer makes us stop praying. Dr. Brewster would say, I said something. And I'll say that again. Jesus taught us in the Garden of Gethsemane to pray until prayer makes us stop praying because we've ceased from seeking our own will and seeking, we've given way for God's will. Pray till prayer makes you forget your own wishes or merge it with God's will. God has wisely given us prayer, not as a way to get the good things of life, but a way to learn to do without them. Not as a way to escape evil and suffering, but as a way to become strong enough to meet them head on. When we pray and pray right, God will send angels unto us from heaven to strengthen us. And we, just as Jesus, will receive the true answer or true reply to our prayer. He received strength for the task that was before him. He received strength for Calvary. Prayer pre prepares us for the difficult and agonizing sacrifices that we must make in life. Prayer makes us willing to and ready to not just say, but to actually give up our wishes and commit to not my will, but thy will be done. It was in the Garden of Gethsemane, not the Garden of Gethsemane, but the Garden of Eden that, that Adam forfeit mankind's relationship with God. But it was in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus restored our relationship with God. Prayer in Gethsemane opened the door for the cross on Calvary that opportunity for Jesus to be ready, prepared to go through was achieved in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus hung, bled, and died. The, they, they buried him in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day morning, God raised him up from the dead with all power in his hands. Power to save us from our sins. Power to help us in times of trouble. Power to feed the hungry power to supply water to the thirsty, power to, to when we are on our bed of afflictions, he will come and heal us, power 
to be a bridge over troubled waters in our lives. Power to hear our cry and answer us by and by. Power to lift up bowed down heads. Power to mend broken hearts and power to heal the sick and raise the dead. Power to give sight to the blind. Power to, 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 to loose stammering, stammering lips. Power to open plugged up ears that can't hear. Power to da turn darkness into light so that we can say like the psalmist, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Power to give sight to the blind, power to put clapping in our hand, power to put running in our feet and praise in our mouth. Praise his holy name. I've got to leave you now. But Jesus is my everything. My everything he is. Jesus is my great I am. He's my Lord and my Savior. And if I want to rule with him one day, I've got to be willing to suffer with him. And more than in baptism. Baptism was the symbol of the life that we must live if we're going to be his. If we're not willing to suffer with him, then in essence, we have no part in him. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. But most of all, thank you first for the Garden of Gethsemane and our trip there this morning. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to, to know the Garden of Gethsemane story for a reminder that we can come boldly unto your throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need, where we can give up our will and our wishes for your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this day. We pray that God will use uh, the words that I've shared to bless your life and to help you to be a blessing to somebody whose path you might cross that has lost all reason of hope. Let them know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning if we trust in the one that holds everything in his hand, especially us. Again, thank you. Uh, as I leave you, let me remind you to stay safe by masking up, by washing your hands, and by practicing safe distances uh, while you're out uh, doing your thing wherever you go, have to go. And go if you have to. There come a time when we'll be able to move around normally again. But for now, we've got to say not our will, but Lord, thy will be done. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.